This lighting though, it's just amazing. You can't even see me. Oh, it's hot. I should open this window. It's hot in my bedroom. Where's the good lighting? This is hurting my arm. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I wanted to give you an update on the plants that I keep in my bedroom. You might find this interesting because I'm gonna be featuring some of the plants that I purchased from Thailand. So they were transitioned from outside and I kept them in a propagation box that was very high humidity to my bedroom, which has virtually like no humidity this time of year. It's the fall and the light is a lot lower. They do get southern exposed light, but they're kind of lower from the window, so they're not getting like really intense sun. So if you have any questions, just leave them down below and I'll try to answer all of them. So if you're interested in seeing my plants, just keep on watching and I'm gonna get into the tour. All right, so I just wanted to first give you a little overview of my room. So that is a southern exposed window right there. And then over here, that is a western window. And um, unfortunately there are no plants in front of there. I don't really have that much room. And I made my bed just for you. <laughs> just kidding, I make it every day. So let's start on the floor, I guess. This is my Hoya Macrophilia Variegata. This is one that I've um, had for a while. I just took a propagation from the main plant. Next to that, I have one of my Hoya Australis Lisas. It's pretty small. Hoya Webergii, I believe it's called. These are some pieces that I'm propagating. And this is my Hoya Rotunda Flora that I got from my friend Joyce. This is one of the first plants that I got from Thailand. Um, it's Hoya Pachaclata Variegata, New Moon. And it's doing really well. It hasn't grown at all, but I think it's just focusing on growing new roots, but it seems to be doing really well. Um, this is my Hoya Carii Variegata. As you can see, it is really large, so I just have it sitting on the floor. And I noticed when I tried growing it inside, whenever it would grow new leaves, they would fall off. So I put it outside this summer. And those are two new leaves right there. The, I noticed the variegation kind of looks more green when it's a new leaf and then it will fade to more of like a creamy white. But it's doing really well. This is my spring cactus and it has done so well. I've kept it inside the whole time that I've had it and it's in one of my unearthed wonder pots. She's like my favorite potter of all time. She's so talented and it has grown a lot since I've purchased it and it did have thrip when I first got it. So if you have thrip on any of your plants, I'll link a video on how to get rid of it in the right hand corner, but they're pretty easy to get rid of. This is my other plant that I got from Thailand. Um, it's the large Hoya Rotunda Flora. It's also known as the square leaf Hoya. It's honestly, I think, my favorite plant. It grows like crazy. It's so easy to care for. It just looks so cute. I love how the leaves are shaped more like a rectangle, even though it's called square leaf. It's just really succulent. The leaves are very thick. And when it goes into bloom, it has these really pretty white flowers. It's just such a sweet plant. It's so different looking. And then on this shelf, um, it gets a lot of bright and direct light. This is my Hoya Hindu Rope Variegata that does not grow. It kind of just gets like more wide, but it doesn't really grow long for some reason. I want to call this guy Hoya Enduensis, but I don't think that's correct. I'll put the name on the screen once I find out what this is called. But this guy is like pretty difficult to care for. I put him in the propagation box right away, along with all of my Hoyas from Thailand. He lost a ton of leaves when I first got him, but right now he's doing pretty well. I'm hoping I'll keep him alive during the winter, but I know it might be difficult. Up here, I just have another um, spring cactus. And then this is Hoya Fitchy, um, that honestly is not doing that well. Some of these leaves, look like really wrinkly and not too good. Um, I'm not really sure what's going on with it, but the rest of the plant looks fine. And then on this table, um, I have Hoya Potsy Chiang Mai. This guy's beautiful, but it really does collect a lot of dust because the leaves are so large. So I do wash it off in the shower a lot, but it's a really beautiful plant and it does grow a lot. This is Hoya Mathide and wait, no, it's not. This is 
what the heck is this? Hoya Meliflua, and it still has not bloomed for me. I kept it outside all summer and it actually grew a lot. That's why I had to trellis it around this little bamboo U-hoop. I don't know, it does well, but it just, it really only grows for me if I keep it outside in the summer. This is Hoya Shortleaf. I forget the first part of the name, so I'll put it on the screen. But um, I did propagate it into two um, extra plants because the main plant was kind of struggling, but I think I got it to root and it's doing well. But I just love the veining on the leaves. It's absolutely beautiful. And the flowers are really neat as well. They're like red and yellow, so. I'm hoping I can get it to flower. I have noticed some peduncles on the plant, so we'll see if I can get it to flower. And then over here, this is my Hoya Lisa. It has grown two new vines that are vining from the main plant, so I might propagate it at some point, but it's just absolutely huge and it's really easy to care for. So if you're able to find one, I would definitely recommend getting it. And the leaves look like they've been painted with watercolor. It's really beautiful. And then over here, I just have my Hoya Monstera um, that's climbing up this moss pole. And a lot of people have asked me where I got this planter from, and it's from West Elm. But I don't plant it directly into the planter since there's no drainage, so I just keep it in um, a plastic nursery pot that has drainage so that it doesn't get root rot. I just wanted to mention that when I transitioned my Hoyas from outside to inside, I didn't do anything special, but basically I made sure that the plants are in areas that are bright. Um, you don't obviously want them to be in like a dark room, so they're all by windows. And I'm also gonna keep them in their plastic nursery pots, probably for like a year or just until the spring or summer because I want the root systems to really develop and I've noticed that when I've propagated plants before or if I have really small root systems they typically do a lot better in the plastic pots. I find when I put them in terracotta they just dry, they dry out too fast and then for some reason they don't do as well so I'm gonna just keep them in the really small plastic pots. I also wouldn't transition the plants because where I live right now, it's fall. So the root systems aren't gonna be growing too much since they don't grow actively during the fall or winter. It does of course depend on the plant, but when it comes to most of the plants that I have, they completely stop growing um, when it's cold out. So I'm just gonna leave them alone, keep them in their pots and just water them when they're completely dry. I might have to use a humidifier for some of my more finicky plants, like that Hoya that has like the ruffly leaves. That guy requires a lot of humidity, so I might have to provide that during the winter, but I'll just see how it does. But I Anyway guys, if you have any questions, just leave them down below. I hope you enjoyed the video. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one. Okay, bye. <laughs> the girls wanted to say hi. Kona, say hello. Hi guys. All right guys, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Chloe's nickname is Kirsten Stewart. <laughs> Kirsten, Kirsten Stewart. So if you made it this far in the video, comment Kirsten Stewart down below in the comments. Bye.